Ladies and gentlemen, it's really my pleasure to be here this morning and to welcome you at this International uh, Bank of Latvia Macroeconomic Conference. As, we met in, as, as we're meeting in Riga in 2014, the euro area is slowly recovering from the crisis. It is enlarging, it is in the process of the coming closer to common understanding of the future policies to reinforce recovery. The euro area is also embracing the new member state, welcoming neighboring Lithuania from January 1st next year. This makes the euro the common currency for entire Baltic region. This is the dream we have all have dreamt for many, many years. I remember since 1989 when the first discussions about common Baltic currency took place. Today's theme invites us to revisit conclusions or messages from the recent crisis and the measures taken so far. My remarks today will naturally focus, therefore, on Latvia's and the Baltic's experience, which is, in my opinion, could enrich our current discussion on the policies supporting growth in single European currency area. Of course, we have to keep in mind that each country has its own unique stories overcoming the crisis which began in 2008. The differences and the degree of success of these efforts are determined by both macroeconomic developments during the run-up to the crisis and decisions made at the outset. This to the large degree determines how serious the crisis would be and predetermined the potential speed of recovery. Economic growth before the crisis in many countries we could, we could uh, range it from unbalanced to extremely unbalanced. We also had excessively large public expectations of income levels that would rapidly converge with those in the rest of the Europe and equally impatient governments that relied on windfall revenues on spending, accumulating their large fiscal gap. This only fueled economic boom for a few short years before the crisis, and Latvia was virtually a wash with the money inflows. If we were to compare this econo economy with the Bostab, then the tap of Bank of Latvia or the central bank remained turned off for all of the boom years. But there was a lavish flow of whole range of sources supporting record levels of growth. These flows of funds included, first of all, deficit spending, bank lending spree, EU structural funds, foreign exchange repatriated from the people who have led Latvia and direct in foreign direct investment coming into Latvia because Latvia was a new territory uh, joining the European Union. I will briefly touch upon some of these factors. A large structural deficit accumulated throughout the boom years in Latvia largely defined the severity of the crisis. Experiencing the fastest expansion in an extremely strong cyclical upturn in tax revenue Latvia still continued to spend more than it earned. Needless to say, this added extra fuel to already severely overheated economy. Between 2004 and 2008, expenditures grew 2.5 times, and most of that was of structural nature. While deficits remained moderate in nominal terms, they were extremely large cyclically, adjusted and amounted to 7 or 8% of GDP. It became widely obvious only within the burst of the bubble. Guess where then the extra revenues then went? Of course, to a large extent, they were using for salary increases. Wages increases, wage increase severely detented price competitiveness and competitiveness of the companies working in Latvia. Pressures of demand in big in booming economy and limited supply of workers due to the labor outflow after EU accession gave the rise of uncontrolled wage developments. These increases outpaced productivity by far. The temptation to reach the Western European prosperity levels soon prevailed against the better judgment. Between 2004 and 2008, salaries more than doubled, opening the wide wage productivity gap. Having felt the wage increase, people started looking for opportunities to borrow that resulted in a huge lending expansion. Speaking about lending expansion, Latvia's financial sector had come to dominated by Nordic capital here. 
These were competing, these banks were competing for market shares in extended um, domestic market, making use to ample global liquidity and offering their Latvian clients very low interest rates. Optimistic about rapid growth in the future and income, income after joining the EU, people let their private debt level more than triple in a single decade. The prevailing thinking among policymakers was as follows. This is a poor country, 50 years of communist rule, we badly need the growth in order to catch up with the living standards of Western European colleagues and economies. 8% of GDP is good, 10 would be better, 15 would be just fantastic. The collapse of American investment bank Lehman Brothers in September 2008 provoked a global crisis. It changed the risk perception. Financial markets froze, making Latvia's overheated economy extremely vulnerable to global troubles and investment sentiments, investor sentiments. To ensure economic sustainability in the future, Latvia, instead of devaluing its currency, opted for measures which are sometimes referred as expansionary consolidation. I must tell that this is one of the words we, we love here in this country when we speak about expansionary consolidation. Just think about it for the moment. In this, in this country, it is no longer viewed as a contradiction in terms. Back in 2008, many economists in Europe regarded it with suspicion and still continue to call it austerity. Latvia's rapid exit from recession was determined by speed and content of growth supporting decisions taken at, taken at the beginning of the crisis. Latvia saw an internal adjustment of 14.7% of GDP throughout 2009 and 2010, adding other 2.8% by 2012. The rapid consolidation that came largely on the side of the budget expenditure and was based on structural reforms restored the overall confidence in the country's policies. Towards two-thirds of the total consolidation was generated by cutting expenditures, and only one-third came from additional revenue, including the increased taxes. If we look at the bigger picture at the euro area as a whole, it is evident that most countries have likewise prioritized consolidation on expenditure side. We also see that fiscal consolidation in the euro area peaked in the years between 2009 and 2011, mostly in the early years of the crisis. Whether less is more in terms of reduced budget expenditures was hotly debated uh, issue, especially in early days of the crisis. Some of the public debate back then was dominated by the common wisdom that larger budget deficit in times of economic crisis helped to boost supply of money and thus support economic recovery. However, if the problem involves only the lack of supply, but it is also the problem of the demand, demand side, boosting the supply of the money by fiscal stimulus does not necessarily imply more economic growth. Today, Latvia's experience is worth analyzing in international context to see what was the formula that really worked so well. Speed was one of the key elements in this formula. Procrastination would have led the, to significant deterioration of the state economy. Without consolidation, Latvian budget deficit would have reached double digits during the first year of the crisis. Adjustments started with at least popular measures, with least popular measures cutting expenditures and salaries. Speaking a second most element, I think that's ownership. The set of measures of overcoming the crisis was drafted by Latvian authorities and was not directed or imposed from outside, neither by IMF or European Commission. For instance, when even though the IMF considered that at the beginning the outright devaluation would be the right measures, Latvian authorities insist, insisted on massive consolidation as the only viable and right option at that time. An outright devaluation in a small and open economy with almost no raw materials um, would have reduced the level of income in the country, produced a massive inflation and bankruptcy waves. Commitment by the public, large, by public at large could be mostly attributed to the active communication by authorities helping to explain both causes of the crisis and alternative course for that action. 
As we saw later, this ensured an overall public support for reducing the budget deficit. The public expressed its support for the government policies in uh, unexpected elections of 2000 and, uh, 2010 and uh, also in unexpected elections in 2011, which was the se second consecutive year um, of the most severe consolidation measures by repeatedly electing politicians from the governing parties. Solidarity, speaking about expenditure cuts uh, were applied to all branches of the government. The wage and benefit cuts in the public sector were also important part of common effort and also crucial for closing the wage productivity gap which has widened during the boom years. The regained budget sustainability helped Latvia in restoring investor confidence and promoting uh, restoration of competitiveness. The renewed economic growth opened our opportunities for reducing the tax burden on labor with, with an attended positive effect on competitiveness. Latvia has been enjoying the fastest growing growth rate in EU for the last four consecutive years now, with a pre-crisis level reached in 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe this is uh, one of the very important yardstick against which you could measure. Uh, yes, Latvia has suffered a deep economic crisis. Our GDP contracted more than 20 percent, but I think you have to keep in mind that we are back already in a pre-crisis level, which is not the case in many uh, European countries. Our public debt has also been declining for last four consecutive years since 2010. Clearly, no two countries are alike and there are no ready-made recipes to replace uh, recipes from the Baltics. Some of our European partners had amassed high public debt years before the crisis, others had seen protracted periods of erosion in price competitiveness. Some of the Baltic solutions, however, are relevant to the current, current policy debate as well. Namely, we return to the growth in a few short years because of the policy mix activated at the very outset of the crisis. When cornered Latvia carried out reforms of the public finance management and structural reforms, quickly shifting the econ economy back into the motion, and onto the path of growth. The wider economic debate on how to make growth more robust in the euro area is becoming richer in nuance today, which is promising. Less time is spent on searching for a single panacea. This quest is increasingly replaced by understanding <laughs> that economic growth in the future needs to be supported by a combination of policies, including also structural changes. There is much less room for oversimplification. Ever more cheap money alone from Euro system is cited less and less as a silver bullet for solving everything. Keynesianist ideas, unfortunately, are not working. You know this phrase, that famous book, that this time it is different. Instead, the monetary stimulus that ECB is now providing, including uh, improvements in the financial conditions is seen to be accompanied by more responsible role of the fiscal policy and long overdue structural policy reforms. Unfortunately, discussions about using remaining uh, fiscal space are sometimes also a bit misleading. Monetary policy responses must be supported by improvements on the fiscal and structural reforms aside. Speaking about bank lending, I have to say that it remains to, be, it remains to be subdued. There are considerable concerns regarding the impact of the consequences of the prolonged lending weakness in Europe as a whole. Naturally, it is more pronounced in the countries and sectors where the large private and public debt overhangs have been accumulated prior the crisis. The leveraging in such cases is necessary in structural correction and it, and it is has to continue with appropriate lending stimulus policies are sought. What are the ways of mitigating risks of slow credit growth? We all know that we have now Teltro's ABS covered bond purchase programs which are designed to boost bank lending to the real economy and stimulate an upturn in invest of investment and growth. However, as, as I already mentioned, 
Lending development is also closely affected by fiscal and structural policies shaping the overall economic sentiment. Certainly, in the environment where you don't know how the future fiscal policy will be conducted, lending is decreasing. I think, ladies and gentlemen, it is needless to say that um, if you have a situation where you have an ample of money, and banks really in Europe has a lot of money today, but they don't know what will be the future policy of, of the government where the taxes might go up, um, which might uh, lessen the competitiveness of your borrower uh, in next week or next uh, months after the loan has been issued, you most probably will wait and wait and wait. The current economic debate in Latvia also clearly highlights some hurdles which remain to be removed by continued structural reforms. The most conspicuous examples are the new legislative initiatives with the potential to disrupt the business. And the need for the more effective court system, especially with regard of processing bankruptcy cases. No monetary accommodation was, will be successful, however, if it is not accompanied by the right set of structural changes. Of course, sometimes we have to also be more specific. What are the structural changes? What is the definition? Because I think this is the uh, new phenomena we're getting more and more um, discussing uh, lately, and, and people sometimes wonder what are the structural changes. They actually need to gain momentum in order to ensure the longevity of the stimulus effect on growth and increase confidence. The events of the last week uh, and also of this week have reminded us how fragile the recovery uh, in Europe and um, in some other countries have been and, that stimu and the monetary stimulus alone uh, cannot do the job. I do really hope that the policymakers will not waste the time and will not slip into the we will not, not slip in the crisis in order to realize that we need to do more in order to safeguard this fragile recovery. Ladies and gentlemen, Latvia um, and the Baltic region has done some things which we offer for discussion. This experience in managing the recent crisis presents the message that is worth considering um, in the context of example of activating the relevant mix of policies in a timely manner. Less deficit spending has meant more economic activity and reduction of the public debt. The result is rapid recovery and being the fastest, economy, fastest growing economy in this region. I believe that maybe not all of you um, might share these views and there is a, a lot of, lot of things uh, people would, would uh, do differently, but that's why we're having this conference today. I wish that you have a very interesting and fruitful discussions here, and I think we have a, um, very interesting um, panel speakers, we have um, uh, keynote speakers, and uh, we will have an interesting time uh, for discussions about these problems which we are having now, not only in Eurozone, but in, in, in the um, economies around the world. Thank you very much.